In my last video, I went over Arco Linux and kind of did a first time install for people who hadn't used it before. And in that video, I said that I was going to go over Xmonad and talk to you about how to get started with it, showing my config, this, that, and the other thing. However, over the past several days since making that video, I run into more and more issues with Xmonad to the point where I just don't feel like it's worth really using anymore, and I am instead going to be switching over to i3. Now, I do plan to make a video in the future going over i3, how to get started with it, what my workflow is with it, so on and so forth. But for now, I want to completely focus on Xmonad and show you the various problems that I have with it and why I'm leaving it behind. That being said, let's get started. So now that we're in the desktop, let me show you some of the problems that I'm talking about. Let me open up Vim, open up my Xmonad config, and zoom in a couple of times so those of you uh, can see it a little easier. So right out of the gate, one of the first problems I ran into with using Xmonad was getting borders to disappear, not only when there was only one window open, but if I was watching, say, something on YouTube. So, so if I go into a web browser, and I bring up YouTube and I want to watch just a random video. Let's watch DT here. Today I'm going to be taking. Okay, nope, we don't need to hear any audio for it. When I hit full screen, the border disappears. Originally, I had a problem where when I was trying to watch a video, there would be a consistent border around not only the video, but in a window, even if it was the only window in the current desktop. Well, how I solved that was by adding no borders xmonad layout right here and then over here calling it using smart borders in the my layout part of the layout config now i couldn't figure out how to get that working in any way shape or form the reason is part of the problem i'm having with xmonad is that there isn't just one way to write a config file see if i go back and open up a web browser and i scroll over and go to DistroTube's YouTube or DistroTube's GitLab. So we're here in Derek Taylor's GitLab, and if we go over to his dot files and look up his dots, where is it? Xmonad file, dot xmonad.hs, you will see that the imports are pretty much the same. Zoom in a little bit more so you can see. The imports are the same. Where it differs is in pretty much everything else. So over here in my layout, I have this very specific type of coding. Well, in here, not only is it very difficult to find where he keeps his uh, my layout portion of the of his config, but he calls it my layout hook. He has other ways that he writes the config for Xmonad versus with mine. So let's say I wanted to add the no borders or the um, smart borders here, and I wanted to implement that on my config from his config. That wouldn't be possible because his is written differently than mine. Someone else's would be written differently than both mine and his. The way Xmonad works is that there isn't just one way to write a config file, there are actually multiple ways. So it makes it very difficult not only to get advice from other people on how to add things, but even from Xmonad's own user documentation. Another thing I ran into as an issue was the way layouts actually work. So how you actually switch between the layouts is, uh, let's open up a new window so we can kind of uh, open up a terminal so that you can see how this works. You hit super space and it runs through the various layouts. Now for me, all I care about is tiled and full screen. Okay, that's the only layouts I care about. These other layouts I could care less about. So watch what happens when I go in and try to just remove these other mirror tiled spiral and three column mid layouts. So as you can see, I removed those layouts. So I only have tiled and full, but if I open up a terminal and I go in and I go super space to go through all the many layouts, it automatically brings up full so I can cycle through the various windows, but the other layouts are still there. Why? <laughs> Why is that? I got rid of them, or at least I thought I had gotten rid of them. The other thing is inconsistency. The last time I did this and I got rid of the other layouts and then restarted Xmonad, the error file that comes up, the xmonad.error, is that 
normally would show you a bunch of issues that you may have if you're trying to get something working filled with errors. This time, it's not doing that. For whatever reason, getting rid of this has not caused the .xmonad errors file to fill up with a bunch of errors. It, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me why xmonad does things the way that it does. It just it doesn't. Nothing here behaves the way that it should be. Now you may notice something down here, the my show name thing. And this essentially what this should do is if I go through and I scroll through the various layouts, there should be a little pop up that comes up and says, hey, you're on workspace one, two, three, what have you. So I have that code in there. I've imported it over here under layout show name, but it still doesn't work. It's still not there. So I figured, okay, maybe I need to take it and call it somewhere else. Maybe it needs to be over here in my layout, or maybe it needs to be all the way down here in main and layout hook. No matter what I tried, no matter where I tried to put, whether it was my show W name theme or show name, show W name, no matter where I put it, it wouldn't work. You know what? Let me show you here. We're going to go to here and we're going to add a new thing. We're going to do insert. Then we're going to add a new theme and we're going to do show W name. Okay. So I'm going to add that in. Show name in my layout so that it should work, right? You would think that that's how that behaves. However, watch. Go in, refresh exponent, by the way, super shift R. Errors. <laughs> that's not where you're supposed to put it. Okay, so let's just go back. Let's undo what I just did. Now let's try to import it down here. Maybe it's supposed to go somewhere in here with no borders full. So let's do another insert and let's do show W name. Okay, so no borders full show W name. Maybe it's supposed to be called in here in my layout. All right, so we'll save it, do a refresh, more errors. Okay, maybe I did the space from all. Maybe I'm supposed to add these, um, pipe symbols here to there. So it's just show name. So let's once again, right, refresh, and let's go over and see if we get any errors and look, more errors. No matter what I try, no matter where I end up putting this show W name, or even if it was just the my show W name theme, no matter where I try to put it, I end up getting errors every single time. And with other things like the layouts, not quite behaving the way I want them to. You know, to where yes, full is the first thing it goes to, but then I have to still cycle through the rest of the layouts to get back to where I wanted to. And I thought I got rid of those other layouts, and yet they're still there. It just, Xmonad is written in Haskell. And Haskell is a notoriously difficult language to learn and configure for. And I see why. Trying to figure out where to call things for, where to import things in, where to actually get things to behave in the way that you want them to, it becomes tedious. It gets to the point where you're not having fun configuring Xmonad anymore. You're struggling with it. You're fighting with it every step of the way. And when you think you've solved something and it works just, and you think it's going to work just fine, it then just doesn't. And even when you want to try to add something like smart borders, you can't just go online and say, hey, where do I go in and import this? Because your config file is going to look different than somebody else's. So it just becomes immensely difficult to try to configure it to behave the exact way you want it to. There is one other thing I wanted to show you here real quick. Uh, issue I've been having with Xmonad, and it, this doesn't happen in i3, and I've been using i3 for a while, and it's great, and it's fantastic. I haven't had this issue there. If I go to Rofi, and I bring up VirtualBox, and I want to load up, let's say, this virtual machine I created for the last video I made uh, with Arco Linux. We're going to start it, bring it up. Now, watch what happens. We're, we're going to let it load. Load into it, and once it loads, I'll show you something. Okay, so... Here we go. Here's the VM. Now watch what happens when I go in and try to view full screen mode. It, there's this weird gray out that happens for the entire VM. And I don't get why. 
it doesn't happen in i3. It only happens here in Xmonad, and it only happens when it's a full screen mode. If I go back down here and I go to view and I exit out of full screen mode, you can see it clear as day. That's why in the last video I made it had that weird box resolution and why it wasn't in full screen because whenever I try to go in and go into full screen mode, this would happen. I don't get it. I don't doubt that there are many people out there that have gotten Xmonad to work properly, to be configured in the way that they want it to be, to be able to behave the way that they want it to without any problems or issues like the ones I've been having. But for me, there are just too many issues to errors that come out of the config file when I try to add something and there's no clear way to do it, when I'm trying to find ways to add stuff to the config file, but because different config files can be configured in a different way, I can't just get help from someone online to add it to my own, to weird and random issues like the weird gray out screen when I'm trying to load up a full screen virtual machine, it's, it's just become a headache. Xmonad is no longer fun for me. I've been working at it for about a week and no matter what I try, no matter what I do, there's always something that comes up that I have to really work out to try to fix or I just can't fix because I don't know what's going on with it. And for that reason, I am going to leave Xmonad behind. Now, for those of you that use it and love it, that's phenomenal, that's great. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It's just for me, it's not the timely window manager I was looking for and I will not be continuing to use it. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you really liked it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. See ya.